For decades, automotive scientists and engineers have been chasing an almost mythical ideal, a battery that is cheap, safe, long-lasting, and capable of efficiently powering electric vehicles. It seemed like one of those distant dreams until an unusual innovation began to attract attention behind the scenes in the industry. Plastic batteries. That's right. It's not a metaphor or a figure of speech. We're talking about batteries built with conductive polymers, free of rare metals, and with a bold promise, withstanding more than 12,000 full charge and discharge cycles. For comparison, that's about 10 times the durability of Tesla's current batteries, such as the famous 4680 cells. The most intriguing thing is that these batteries are practically fireproof. In a scenario where even small smartphones can cause fires due to thermal failures in their lithium batteries, the arrival of a technology with zero risk of combustion is almost a collective relief. The secret lies in the materials used, abundant, light, and cheap polymers, which do not burn like the reactive metals present in traditional models. And in addition to safety, they also do not depend on aggressive mining nor on unstable supplies such as cobalt or nickel. This changes everything, environmentally, geopolitically, and economically. Now, imagine a car that lasts for decades without you having to replace the battery. Does that sound like an exaggeration? But laboratory tests indicate that these batteries could last up to 100 years if they are charged in light cycles, something like a full recharge every three days. Of course, Real life is very different from a laboratory, but even so, this number makes anyone curious. The industry has never been so close to a solution with this level of longevity. And with the current advances in technology, this promise is starting to leave the theoretical realm and enter, albeit timidly, the radar of major manufacturers. That's why the name of these batteries, as informal as it may seem, is starting to make the rounds at conferences, scientific papers, and even business meetings. Plastic battery may sound like something fragile or disposable, but the term hides a potential revolution. In the real world, a cell that can withstand thousands of cycles without losing efficiency could be everything fleet operators and manufacturers dream of. After all, who wouldn't want to stop worrying about battery degradation over time? And that's where the game starts to change. These batteries are not only durable, but also incredibly thermally stable. They don't require complex cooling systems, which reduces weight, cost, and complexity in vehicles. Think about how many components could be eliminated from an electric car if there was no risk of the battery overheating. Fewer parts, less maintenance, and more efficiency. It sounds too good to be true, but science is racing to prove that it's not just laboratory talk. Another factor that puts these batteries in the spotlight is the issue of materials. They are made from common, widely available hydrocarbons, rather than from scarce elements that provoke trade disputes and silent wars. Independence from rare materials also represents a freedom for manufacturers. Instead of relying on mining in specific countries, production could be decentralized, which would open the door to unprecedented global scale. Despite all the optimism, reality still imposes its limits. The promising plastic batteries, despite all their durability and safety, face two crucial problems, low energy density and high self-discharge rate. In simple terms, this means that they store little energy for their weight, and worse, they lose some of this energy even when they are not being used. For those accustomed to lithium batteries that offer hundreds of watt-hours per kilogram, the modest 60 Totwitzwiden kill of current polymers seems like a step backwards, especially when we are talking about vehicles that need to travel long distances on a single charge. And there's more. This self-discharge is treacherous. Imagine parking your car on a Friday night with a full battery, and when you turn it on on Monday, you realize that part of the charge has simply evaporated. This happens because internal reactions, even without active use of the vehicle, continue to consume energy. This characteristic makes use in passenger cars with long intervals between recharges quite delicate. 
A very high self-discharge rate can turn a revolutionary battery into an after-sales problem, with customers complaining about loss of autonomy even when the car is parked. But, like every good technology story, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. Scientists are already developing the second generation of these batteries, informally nicknamed Energy Reservoir. This new batch of cells promises to multiply energy density by three, reaching values between 150 and 100 Adri D Lati by Wank Crow, a level similar to that of the lithium iron batteries currently used in the entry level Model 3 and in BYD vehicles. If these goals are achieved, the scenario changes completely. We are no longer talking about an academic dream, but about a real alternative that is starting to compete with the solutions already consolidated. And this new energy density is also a game changer for urban vehicles. Cars that travel short distances every day, such as delivery vehicles, commercial fleets, or ride hailing, don't need 500 or 800 kilometers of range. They need efficiency, low cost, and durability. And that's exactly where plastic batteries can shine. A range of 100 to 150 kilometers per charge, combined with a lifespan 10 times longer than that of traditional batteries, could make these options extremely attractive, especially if production costs continue to fall, as expected. Of course, there is still the challenge of space and weight. To achieve respectable range with batteries that have a lower density, the volume occupied by the car needs to be larger. And this creates a dilemma. More weight means less efficiency. However, this problem can be overcome with design intelligence, something that Tesla, for example, masters very well. Just remember what they did with structural batteries in the new models. If they apply this logic to polymers, they can offset part of the weight penalty with optimized distribution and structural integration. Another point worth highlighting is the parallel advancement of thermal management systems. One of the factors that most accelerates the degradation of lithium batteries is heat, or rather, the inability to deal with it efficiently. In plastic batteries, the chemical composition itself makes the system much more thermally stable, requiring less active cooling and making the entire assembly simpler and cheaper. This difference, which seems small, represents a huge advantage in practice, especially for applications in regions with extreme climates. While plastic batteries aren't ready to dominate the game on their own yet, they're starting to show where they can really shine. And one of those areas is hybrid battery architectures, an approach that's gaining traction among electric vehicle engineers and manufacturers. The idea here isn't to completely replace the main battery with polymer, but rather to use the strengths of this technology strategically as an auxiliary module that takes on the most aggressive power tasks, the ones that put the most strain on traditional cells. Consider this. When an electric car accelerates sharply or brakes regeneratively, there are intense energy spikes flowing through the system. These rapid charges and discharges are exactly the kind of situations that wear out conventional batteries more quickly. Now, if a small conductive polymer module is there to absorb these spikes, the main battery, usually lithium, remains better protected, suffering less thermal and mechanical stress. This means less wear and tear, more range over the life of the battery, and much more predictable maintenance. And the best part is that plastic batteries love this kind of challenge. They are made to withstand energy abuse without complaining. Because they are incredibly resistant to degradation, they can withstand thousands of deep cycles without losing performance. In addition, their thermal stability makes them perfect for moments of high energy flow, without the risk of overheating or combustion. This positions them as true electrical shock absorbers, absorbing the impacts that would destroy other, more sensitive cells. This hybrid logic is similar to that of a sports car that uses ceramic brakes only on the front wheels, where the effort is greater, and regular brakes on the rear. The same concept can be applied to energy. An energy ceramic brake is placed in the system. The polymer batteries, which take the brunt of the blows, while the lithium batteries are protected. This can extend the useful life of the set by years, 
which is especially interesting for fleets of taxis, delivery vans, or vehicles that travel long distances daily. Furthermore, using hybrid batteries can dramatically reduce the cost of replacing batteries. If only the polymer module absorbs the brunt of the impacts and has a lifespan of 10 or 15 years, then the lithium module needs to be replaced less frequently. This transforms the entire cost of owning an electric vehicle. And in a market where the total cost of ownership outweighs the purchase price, these long-term savings can be a killer selling point. Another interesting point is that this strategy does not need to wait for industrial revolutions to be implemented. With current prototypes, it is already possible to imagine hybrid configurations in urban vehicles. Automakers can start with test fleets using the current architecture, but with a polymer auxiliary module, and start collecting real performance data. This speeds up development and shortens the time to mass production. If there's one place where plastic batteries are starting to show their almost unbeatable strength, it's in fast charging stations and stationary energy storage. Most people think of batteries only inside cars, but there's a whole universe behind the infrastructure that powers these vehicles. And in this universe, thermal safety, extreme durability, and resistance to high power discharges are fundamental requirements, exactly where conductive polymers shine. These batteries could be the invisible heart of the superchargers of the future, acting as true shields against power surges that threaten to overload the electrical grids. Imagine a charging station on a busy highway with dozens of cars pulling up to recharge at the same time. The conventional power grid simply isn't designed to handle that kind of explosive charge in just a few minutes. Enter the concept of buffers, stationary batteries that store energy slowly during periods of low demand and then release it at full power when vehicles plug in. And guess what technology is fitting the bill perfectly? Exactly, plastic batteries. These batteries can withstand discharges of up to 15 megawatts, something unthinkable for most conventional batteries without a massive active cooling system. And because they don't catch fire, even in extreme temperatures, they can be installed in remote, unattended, or difficult to maintain locations, such as deserted highways, industrial zones, or even electrical substations. This combination of high power, zero combustion, and long lifespan makes them ideal candidates for supporting the growth of fast charging networks, something that is increasingly needed as EVs become more popular. And we're not talking about theory. Several tests have already shown that, with the right configuration, a bank of polymer batteries could serve as a buffer for multiple simultaneous charges even during peak hours. Instead of requiring an absurd electrical infrastructure, the system works like a smart reservoir. It fills up slowly during the early morning hours when energy is cheap and abundant and releases everything during rush hour, like a stationary supercapacitor, an ingenious solution that solves one of the biggest bottlenecks in large-scale electrification. Another benefit is that this type of system does not depend on the evolution of energy density. Unlike vehicles, which need to optimize weight and space, stationary batteries can be larger and heavier without any problem. If it is necessary to stack tons of cells to deliver stability and power, great. There is no limit to the space in the basement of a charging station. And the more installed capacity, the more resilience for the local power grid. This is a relief for cities that suffer from power outages or overloaded grids. Even with all these promising advantages, the industry knows that no new technology can survive in the lab alone. That's why field testing has become the next critical step in validating the true potential of plastic batteries in practice. Talking about 12,000 cycles and thermal stability is all well and good in a presentation chart but what happens when these batteries are exposed to the scorching desert sun, the sweltering humidity of the tropics, or the bitter cold of the mountains? It's these kinds of scenarios that will separate the talk from the reality. The current proposal is simple and straightforward. Assemble around 100 vehicles equipped with conductive polymer batteries and put them to work in intensive fleets, such as taxis, delivery vans, or city buses in different parts of the world. 
The idea is to subject the systems to real stress, monitoring parameters such as loss of autonomy at rest, performance under thermal variations, resistance to impacts, and high-speed charge cycles on a daily basis. This practical data is essential to predict how these batteries will behave on a large scale and what adaptations will still be necessary. This is where things get interesting. If tests show that self-discharge issues, for example, can be overcome with clever firmware or well-calibrated thermal management systems, the plastic battery could be in the game for good. But if losses are greater than expected, or if problems with accelerated aging in extreme environments arise, the technology will still have to wait. The good news? Even in this scenario, nothing will be wasted. The same battery that was not ideally suited for cars can still be repurposed for stationary use, and with great success, because the energy sector is hungry for solutions. A storage system that lasts for decades, is safe and easy to install in remote locations, and be more valuable outside the car than inside it. Isolated microgrids, industrial facilities, and even military operations can benefit immensely from these batteries, especially in regions where replacing equipment every five years is simply not feasible. And it is precisely this Plan B that makes the investment safer for those who are betting big on polymers. What's more, this gradual approach avoids unnecessary financial risk. Instead of launching an entire line of vehicles with an unproven technology, Companies can do a quiet introduction, collecting data and adjusting production based on evidence. This approach is often used in other areas of technology. And in the case of batteries, it could be the key to avoiding public fiascos and disastrous recalls. When it comes to high-performance batteries, it is impossible to ignore the name that has stirred up market expectations the most, lithium metal batteries. Alongside plastic batteries, they represent what are perhaps the two boldest bets of the new energy generation. But while polymer batteries shine for their safety and almost absurd longevity, lithium metal batteries attract attention for a completely different reason, monstrous autonomy and ultra-fast charging. We are talking about promises like a thousand miles on a single charge and recharges in just five minutes. Yes, five. The main difference between these technologies lies in their philosophy. Plastic batteries are all about durability. They are virtually immortal, fireproof, and made from abundant materials. Lithium-ion batteries are the opposite, more fragile, demanding, and still in the early stages of durability. But they make up for all this with a level of energy stored per kilogram that is simply shocking. While polymers still dream of reaching 180 dodi dewetric, lithium-ion prototypes are already exceeding 500 utwaler dewetric. This makes it possible to build lighter, more efficient cars with more interior space, because they need much less battery to deliver much more. And it doesn't stop there. The charging rate of lithium-ion batteries is also a game changer. An electric sedan with this technology could be charged almost as fast as you fill up a tank of gas. This, combined with a range of 1,000 miles, practically eliminates the so-called range anxiety, one of the biggest obstacles in the minds of those thinking about migrating to electric vehicles. But of course, everything has a price. And here, the cost is not just financial, it's also technological. The cycle life is still low, around 500 complete cycles. Good for luxury cars for occasional use, terrible for taxis or shared vehicles, 